Hello, everybody. Come on in. Nice to see y'all. I think I see a cat out there. Uh, welcome to the Brooklyn Rails Wednesday afternoon poetry reading series. We've got a really great reading for you today, curated by Sophia Terazawa. It's called Wilding Our Damage in Offering. Sophia will be reading along with Sylvia Chan, Fatima Ayan Malika Hirsi, Arya Pahari, and Leah Tiger. I will introduce Sylvia. I'm sorry, I'll introduce Sophia in just a minute or two. Uh, first, I'm just going to say a couple quick things about the Brooklyn Rail. If you're here for the first time, these readings take place every week. There will be information posted in the chat about the rail itself and primarily about the various endeavors, publications, and performances uh, our various readers either have done or have in the works. My name is Anson Berrigan. I'm the poetry editor of the Rail uh, of the Brooklyn Rail, and I work on this series with Chloe, Carolyn, and Eleanor. And we're all very glad you're here. This is the 160th of these readings, and this is also the 952nd episode of the NSE, which today stands for Non-Neutral Sycophantic Espionage. And this is a very open space. We don't tell people what to say. We don't tell them what to say. We don't mind poems about flowers, but we're not altogether interested in them right now. Sophia Terazawa is the author of Winter Phoenix and Anon. A debut novel, Tetra Nova, is forthcoming. A third collection of poetry, Oracular Maladies, is a finalist for the 2023 Noemi Press Book Award and will be published in 2026. Sophia's favorite color is purple. Please welcome Sophia to the Rail Reading. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good night to wherever you are all in this world. Thank you, first of all, to Anselm for this invitation to curate the reading today. I am quite nervous, and so please forgive me if I sound more jittery than usual. I have the honor of introducing my favorite people to you all today. Everyone has such amazing hearts, and I would like to begin with an exquisite corpse that the four of us, the five of us, have created together. After the exquisite corpse, I will invite a moment of silence, and then we will begin with our readings. So the exquisite corpse that we wrote together as a collective. Every friend pulls the best cup, holding five crows in a day moon, kissing strawberries a murder of its own. Cliffs turn their cheeks towards the cry, scry waters for futures. And with this, I present to you our hearts. Collectively, we've decided that we would like to start with a moment of silence for Palestine, but this silence is not like the silence of our oppressors. It's the silence that calls forth action. And so as we move into the silence, I do invite you all, wherever you are sitting in your space, to imagine a protective ancestor into the room, to imagine a protective lineage into the room, to imagine a protective energy into the room. So your silence is not just the silence of your ancestors, or the silence of your people. It's a loud silence, it's a silence that will scream, that will call forth into the space what the kinds of silences we are activating against and we're moving against. So everyone, please put both feet on the ground, put both hands on your stomach or on your heart. You may close your eyes if you wish. You may keep your eyes wide open if you wish. I want you to call upon your silence. I want you to call upon your ancestors and I want you to invite them into this space.
Thank you all. And forgive the loud noise outside my office. I am on campus right now. We will begin with Sylvia. I have a bio for Sylvia. So when I think of you, Sylvia, protective and fierce, I think of the desert. Sylvia, you have immense heart. You want to feed everyone. No one goes hungry in your presence. I'm so glad we're friends. You've published one book so far, and I wait for the next. We're all waiting for the next. Though I want you to take your time, no one can rush you. I will pull a card for you, Sylvia. <laughs> Sylvia, the creator. Everyone, please welcome Sylvia. Thank you, Sophia, all my heart. Um, and I'm so honored to be reading in Sharon's space with Leah, Fatima, and Arya. And thank you, Brooklyn Rail, and all us listeners. I'm going to read three poems um, that I feel embodied, um, yet push against um, this collective theme we've decided upon, wielding our damage and that idea of Re reinventing, if we will, uh, revising that offering as it makes sense, as is right for us. In the bellows, Satie seams up the backs of my legs. I feel your placated finger on my thighs. At the Yun City Bart, your body substitutes for your words, although unsuccessfully, as your hands push quickly to my sides. Your fingernails pick at my hands until they puncture skin and leave a red embossed liver. When you grind the pearly whites of my thumb left scar, I don't feel beautiful. I feel like a wasteland cool out of stupor, dirty and violent. I understand my sensuality is false. My body is an intellectual power when you tilt towards your chest. One, Billie Holiday mesmerizes the English language. That's how exacting she is. Two, and then you said, it's my Lolita calling, calling my name to wake me. Three, to which I said, I've gone towards the light to feel beautiful. All music transcription begins in the archive. Feel the pit in my stomach. Four years we lived in the Bellows, Spinley Bay Area suburb, where you listen to my language, selfish and German. When you taught me how to push my tongue against my teeth, how to sound out myself, you asked, can you push against the front of the consonants and feel them pushing back? The pit convulses like scratches in your recording, startled by a fingerprint. They must have tightened our losses in a frenzy. Lolita, the tip of my tongue trickling to your teeth. You remind me of my fate, except my stepfather's terms or the shuffle to foster care. And then I said, I'm not your daughter. Without my pinch grass, how would you recognize me naked? to which you responded by pinching my arms, grazing your mouth against my forehead. I go towards the voice to become popular. It's enough to part Billy's lips on the mic and force her to swallow the writer's words. The heroine passes from her body to mine. A metronome stuck on moderato. If you're unwilling to fight against Ceylon's grammar and drop into the language, when his culture was destroyed, his name giving was his end. Over you, I will devise my fate. Devious Adam, my purpose is not to look for you as you search for me in the Loma Prieta earthquake. A reality, you said. I would have saved you if you weren't your mother's daughter. I could say history is one place where we observe each other, 
poetry is another. The observation of your body is desire, is politics. Would it go unnoticed if you're a minor recurrence in the poem, even if my body is the counterpoint? I'll produce a song that isn't there for the recording. Its disconcerted contours will allow my listeners to hear the woman on point zero. You'll see it's no coincidence that I'm no longer seven. I'm 22 and the scales of justice are based on our consciousness. The next two poems I'm gonna read, um, a little bit more recent, um, they are about my foster brother. Maybe the pen is to heaven. It is my pen that sees the first salvo of chemicals until he is put to sleep. My brother loves returning from his grief to be born lost, audible against the eighth notes of being sold or shut. Who loves despite his straitjacket? For when we knew God, my brother loved becoming a fool, glorified birds, darkened hinges. My brother loves pacing the baseball field alone, scrubbing his dirt. You killing me, right? He loved to scream. What is murder but another black boy? Whoever has his commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. My brother loves cupping his palms under my eyes, waiting for the first drop. My brother loves let me and I cry. I love lying if it kept him alive. But I won't entertain the intravenous line snaking into his arms. Made in America, the cathedrals languish higher in unsung love, my brother behind barbed wires. I tell him I love his fairy and airy poetry to summon no freedom if my love didn't keep him safe. Fly away, said his bones. The crows love remitting his addiction where I've inhaled nothing. I love raising my brother. San Quentin Prayers and Their Little Bodies, 2015. Sing softly so his death loses me from my mourning. Sing softer as if life imprisonment or death by his own hands is spiteful. Softly, my brother sings a simple departure, pack our trash bags and to a new home we go. There is no Arizona desert or California foothills that does not end in sacrifice. Songs were getting lost. Give me one provenance, even of the closure of death row curses too late. I am bereaved, a sister in waiting, wondering if Evan Isaiah would have lasted one more year. If his fingers splayed within his cell on yard side, could feel all 215 judicial hangings in the gallows, all 194 gassings in the chamber, all 10 lethal injections before the new chamber is untouched. If he could drop justice from his self-inflicted wounds, would I write a rebel story? Give me one providence, even if the killer in him would rather grate the pellets and titanium anchors in my body, then cry, I'm sorry. My brother always wanted to lift my pain, even though being the only survivor of an I-5 accident is an aggrieved privilege, like looking out on a panorama vista at the San Francisco Bay Area, where you want to be when you're on death row where you want to be when your share isolation is a vision of dying inmates writhing until torn apart, a victim viewing. Where you want to be when I hand over my foster fears as if one erasure can rewrite our roads to salvation. I will never be used to it. I will never toss aside in my sleep extending higher than a noose. Whether my nails leave marks on skin as if I'm the angel, I will find a house with a view that overlooks the galaxies. I will grow into a text that paints our bruises into a new foundation. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you.
And now Fatima. <laughs> Fatima, my moon, there are no words to carry the love in my heart for you. My sister, I would die for you. Do you know this? I would die for your child. There are no words for this time of sorrow, but you write because you must. Thank you for the universe you've given me. I command everyone here to sit with you. I command everyone to pay attention. Fatima, your first book is coming soon, and may we all be as fearless. For you, I will also pull a card. You have the forest. Everyone, please welcome Fatima. Hi, everyone. I really cannot tell you how special it is to be here with my moon sisters and, and all of you. Thank you for being here and breathing the same air together. Um, I have one poem, um, it is coming to you from the ancestral lands of the Sioux Nation, where the salmon have just completed their run and started so much new life. And speaking of new life, this poem is called Dream for Earth. I pull a card surrounded by stained glass. The woman passing, passing, passing my avoidant pew is continuous hum of cars through splendor of trees until on knees we go different ways to pray to the same God. I raise the high priestess above my head and tarot obscures my view of the man some say tried to save us. I stay awake until 5.30 a.m. watching videos of land where he was born, sob with others into Instagram stories, making us a Helianthus, Helios, sun. We become one all-seeing witness. Petals trade red hearts over sadnesses, but what of our tears beside what our eyes have seen? Bodies of human children burned into unrecognizable beings. Sounds come out of places where faces once existed in octaves only heard in horror movies. But this is not a movie. This is not a drill in preparation for something worse. This is the worst, worst, worst thing. This is the story of yesterday and yesterday and yesterday trying to make us believe their tomorrows sound like a song we should sing to. I watch a Dubka circle dance stare gunfire during the great march of return in 2018. I look at maps from 1946. Operators of rude machines, poison, green errors growing, dam rivers flowing in ways misaligned with greed, think nothing of salmon or people cut off from unfurling future generations in ancestral homes. In Gaza, 50,000 people rise each morning with full moon wombs, 160, 160 new babies a day, while tax dollars aid white phosphorus licking tiny bones. Bones, no taxation without representation. Yesterday was the time to become ungovernable, throw tea into harbor, burn all the ships. Let us be sharper thorns. There is no great leader coming. They were all murdered by people who don't like flowers. When live oaks receive a storm, no single tree faces winds alone. Let us link together at roots. It is time to use teeth to protect one another. 
I feast on tender preachers of connection, Naomi Shihab Nye and Ross Gay, Jane Hirschfield and Mary Oliver and Araceli's Gurmai and Ayana's poems with their moments of shimmer. I write down gratitudes when I wake up, meditate, try to dress every piece of wheat bread in flamboyant finery to balance out grief and still in sleep only nightmares trill in my ear. Rinse and warblers banquet on sunflowers we sowed in May, in October, Cavalier, the man who calls himself owning land where we live wants to rid of what remains. I cannot stress enough how much life each autumn beauty gives to the ecosystem, how they are so much him against gray skies. I want to be done trying to convince men what is right. Online, we smile into selfies and disguise words with numbers for please to be seen by the algorithm, free Palestine, please. We just want everyone to be seen as human, please, please, please. It is time to stop saying please. One way love can manifest is wrath. To be a mother is to be tied to more than who came out of you. I fall to knees to kiss feet of every child whose limp limbs enter our kitchen through my phone. Glowing screen becomes comet across dark bedroom. I hope my moans wake the man upstairs who asks us to rid of flowers. Even after we are gone, they will return and return again. Soil does as much as possible to nourish through every threat. Earth hears every invocation and tucks them between water and wet rock. At the boardwalk, before a single written word, a prayer, body bent over wooden rail, hands open, souk basin, strait of Juan de Fuqua, Salish Sea, Pacific Ocean, may I open portals and others, please lend me your strength, make my language as powerful as your waves. I wonder if God hates hearing the word please as much as I detest seeing it offered to our oppressors. I let sidewalk chalk scream. Some woman walks by, finds fault with even this meekness, says, some people might call what you're doing defacing, says, writing end genocide in ephemeral pink is not the way. On knees, without a prayer, hard fist gathered on thighs, shaking in the place where disbelief meets lack of surprise. All I can do to not break her is to listen. She has all directives, no invitation for outside perspectives. I should have asked what to do when calls to Congress and voting fail. Tell me the appropriate response when legions of us are clenched jaws and forefingers picking skin of thumbs. I pay for groceries inside a store and find myself transported across the street with no memory of moving feet. I lose count of moments my daughter looks at me afraid because I place laughter where it does not belong. 10 silent days of 10 hour introspections and still this attachment to hope and aversion to what is. I wish I could say I wish my enemies only a change of heart but what I wish for are their hearts. I could blame all the Scorpio in my chart, but it's more satisfying to find a mirror and toast to all the ways I am what I do not want. I am Ilya's city like a guillotine. My hair is all snakes. Woman made monster give us more than equality. May our thriving be retribution to all those who stand in its way. Thank you. Ah, <laughs> thank you, Fatima. <laughs> oh, how are we all doing? I would like to introduce Aria next. Aria, I remember the time you swam up to me in the pool at Farid and Susan's. It was love at first sight. You're giddy and soft. You're tender. You're wonderful. No small talk is allowed. You're sweet. Thank you for your sweetness. When I think of your work, Aria, I think of friendship. 
shimmering winged creatures come together. There's so much magic in your words. I'll pull a card for you, Aria. <laughs> Aria, you have the stone. Everyone, please welcome Aria. Thank you, Sophia um, and Sylvia and Leah and Fatima. Um, I'm just so moved to be here. Um, and, and yeah, I'm crying, but it feels very calm and very bright. So, okay. Ghost mother, I stare at you on the swing, sweater over your sari, smile like my mother's, teeth straight as a mayor's. You generate wind on the swing, forward, back, forward, back. Tendrils of your hair frame your face. They remind me of my mother's cursive, the breeze brushes the letters forward, back, forward, back. Your ashen hand reaches through the photograph, grabs my wrist. You tell me to come, ow, into the safety of your motion. Your grip twists my flesh with urgency. Ow, you insist. You pull me in with a swing. We fly forward and do not sway backward again. I open my eyes to find you pregnant, standing in front of me. You aged younger, I remain the same. Feel you command in an English that air translates for me on impact. You guide my hand to your belly. Is this her, I ask? anticipating a kick below my palm. Yes, you smile at the gift of a future girl. Timro Ama, your mother. I follow you through the not yet destroyed house. I'm grateful you do not have to witness the earthquake, I confess, you or Bois. O Chori, you reply, head tilted in pity. I have weathered many rumblings, not earth, this house. It has reverberated with yells through many years. I hold back explaining to you how earthquake is different. Instead, I wonder what could be the Nepali word for reverberate. My uncles fill the narrow hallways, tall and lithe in school uniforms. They do not see me. I am your shadow, swollen with your pregnant belly. Durga, arms, she with eight, I with two, I broke before the age of 10. She rests atop a tiger, lets her feet dangle. The dog's teeth plunge for my cheek. Once I brush its fur, coarse as cotton blossom, a demon bleeds out at the pierce of her trident. A man walks past to touch the back of my shorts. My tears well and toss me to my mother, who crouches on her knees in the mandir, pointing me to your platform. Durga, she is your namesake. Shelter. I hope you seek the same shelter as me, your branches in the negative space of mine. But what happens in a storm when air spews into our hidden cracks and slices us into a form we never dreamed to take even in other lifetimes? Birds still visit warped perches while wings remain in need of rest. You persist by my side after all I bemoan. 
closeness closes in to a taut web. The gossamer coats our arms extended to a body who craves reprieve. We examine the fiber and determine its elastic components. Tomorrow we build. FAQ. Am I? Ultimately, only you. The definition suits the material. I don't find, does that mean I'm? Yes, if it resonates and echoes guidance. I can see people, but I don't really feel them. Where? Understand other intrinsic others. I've only, but when I was, I wanted, would I? Easier to explain in brief and fleeting reasons. Some things turn, but not other people. I suppose, still desire. This, a form you determine or rule out. Durga, reprise. I have struggled with forgiveness. I am slackening now. I lay my weapons along the river, bathe in its mouth. The sun slips me into slumber. As I rest, my defenses drop with each leaf upon still water. I do not doze alone. Thank you. Thank you, Aria. Just want to keep looking at all your faces. You're so, you're perfect. <laughs> ah, Leah, <laughs> Leah. What a powerhouse. <laughs> Please allow me to shamelessly pitch you. <laughs> Leah, National Poetry Series finalist. It's only a matter of time before we can all read your book. I want everyone to take note of you. It's an honor to be your friend. You stand so strongly as a witness to the intimate and collective disasters of our lives, of our planet, of our bodies. It's a privilege to bear witness alongside your fierce heart. And the final card for today is for you. <laughs> Leah, you get the shapeshifter. Everyone, please welcome Leah. Ah, okay, thank you. Um, sorry, y'all, the settings were messed up. Um, I want to thank everyone for being here and taking time out of your day to share this space with us. I want to thank Sophia for creating this magical room in which we've stepped into. And I want to thank Brooklyn Royal for providing the roof. Um, all right. Home with two mothers. Under my mother's halo, I am born a tongue of doubt in a dry season lasting years. If she knows me as feathered grass, I know her catabatic, devil winds, and prednisone. Too much relies on air's direction. 
At her flashpoint, she grips my hand until the bones kiss. We pass from one burning to another. When she shakes her fist, I wait in the frame of a door. I inherit her trembling ground and a habit for disaster. Every day, a flock of deer crosses the freeway. On the other side of rainless hills, a frayed electric rope and a wind to carry it home. Plant me a stand of palm trees to candle the dusk gilding our roof line. My hands will ashen the book inside them. To heal, we must understand what happened and why. Mother of blood, I am born from you less. I came from the mouth of dirt. How could she abandon us? Because we did it first. Prospecting. Upheaval makes a gleaming I could hoard or spend. It is the way of things that the strike slip shatters like a glazed pot, that earth is a body self-healing. Along each fault, a series of fractures. The tie rod fails and locks the steering wheel in place. My father says x-ray and broken right foot. He says glass and tweezers. My mother coils the phone cord in her fingers. She does not know I am a cell dividing inside her body's mineral swell. In subterranean rivers, orum and silica, in milk and eggs, a rash or welt. I distend at citrus, wheat, leather belts. The arm that lifts them is splintered with window. Such is the way of things that earth and skin offer up through erosion, the gold unburies like a foreign body. Sometimes in the false quartz veins, gold and its counterfeit fuse together. Sometimes my father shows me his arm and a new translucence breaking the surface. It is the way of things that the damage rises sparkling. Look, when the heart first meets the light, it trembles. And now I want to read two missives. The first is addressed to the flame. And then the last poem I'll be reading is addressed to Fozcheck, which is that weird orange stuff that they drop on wildfire. Missive addressed to the flame. Till I swallow, wake the sleeping, seed summon the sirens without healing. Hope must be a temple built to code eternal flame, therefore light bulbs. Find the tree in my name and give the desert back to itself, blazing sand and forging a glass. I can't see through this false brightness, leaving my lungs heavy with shadow, like the uncle estranged who laughed cradled the gold he ran back for in his cremated hands. My tongue is a purse filling with coins I spend. Bottomless love, I'll never know you without violence, burnout, control line. Resembling me, you fight yourself, feed on dangerous books in the holy argument between burial and burning, always the same graveyard twice a year. The wailing stones are emptied of prayer, folded and refolded like this letter to compact to bend again or ignite the tales that need you for telling. Missive address to Fazcheck. I picture you turning always in the direction of belief, drawing a cordon over roof tiles and wild places and everything held in the prediction of wind. Most days, I fail to bend as you bend, as fire does also, at air's instruction. The reason I tolerate gravity's hold is this. You are made to fall and to rescue in the falling. Thank you for allowing yourself to be carried forever toward damage, which is to seek what you can't prevent, only lessen. 
I want to leave a scar like yours or unlike mine, willing to fade under weeks of sunlight, able to wash clean in rain that forgets to arrive. Untethered from all it means to be human, you cannot hold the consequence of weeds and ruined harvest. It is one thing to be given to the land, another to be given at a distance from the path water travels. And still, I've forgiven your instinct to seep because I share it. One day, I too must join myself to myself, and so our bodies both will be weighted with clay. Between then and now, I should let the drought dead parts of me begin to leaf again. You might find me instead on a hillside threatened with flame, faithless and waiting to greet your oceanless plummet. If I could, I would stand under your swift poison and stain all I touch with protection. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Leah. Sylvia, Fatima, Aria, Leah, I love you all so much. Thank you for your poetry. Thank you everyone for being here, for listening to the poetry of my beloveds. Please hold them up because sometimes I feel like I can't even hold myself up. And so I want you to carry them for me. I will read a little bit of my own work. Um, before I read, I'm going to invite everybody to offer some fire to the space. I see some fire in the chat. I have a little candle, which I will light. If you also have a candle, take a moment and find your candle. You don't have to turn your camera on, but please find a candle if you can. If you have sage or incense, anything that you can burn safely, take a moment. Um, after I finish my reading, we will have some time to share our candles. So if you want to turn on your camera, then you may turn on your camera and share your candle or share your light. Um, this candle is for everyone I love, for you. I would die for you. <laughs> I'll start with a small call to action and I will put a word in the chat. <laughs> I'm calling for treason. Treachery is certainly not the only path to self-determination. The one line of thought about a people's right to live and die with dignity counters annihilation. The war machine is and always will be against your treason. Remember that. One line of thought is certainly not enough to stop a combat vehicle of any size. Remember who you saw in the open in 1989, waving at the tanks to stop. If a poem could lie down, that would be enough. If I could die for your people's right to dream, may that never be enough. The sky records all wars as singular governance. Traitors of the state have been named among us, planting soft prayers in the earth, raising their babies, calling for peace. What do I believe? If earth records even the smallest of hopes, earth betrays no one as I betray the earth. There is no logic to naming our horror. The war machine cannot dream. The war machine cannot dream. The war machine cannot dream. 
It blocks every poem, carries on down the road to every field, the same field for millennia. At first, the poem wore a white shirt and carried what appeared to be nothing. Then the poem decided to take action. The poem hurried out into the street. For years, the poem remained nameless. We only saw the back of its head, the white shirt and a dark pair of trousers, how the poem gestured, stop. A period at the end of a line bringing oblivion. Go to this period, to every line you can with this sign. The poem will fail in many ways. Still, our world is made of singing. I'll just read a few lines from a long poem. And um, this one is dedicated to Fatima. Let in unconditionally, without question, and made a name. The rest yearn for crumpling what remains to speak about in retrospect. Buoyant as perfume before hours of death, sprawl because it hurts. Mannequin at the window in Tel Aviv, your friend photographs three times on three different evenings, who keel together, marchand de vent, marchand de sable avec au mot, j'en ai sans, dev à bout And through that window, stone by stone, imagination stalls what beginning to move you, fracture to yearn, yes, and exit so, think inching the glass, picture forward, birds almost obliterate you there. There, pallid from earth and sky, let in over again because would the face lose all meaning? Would the face missing sentience be forgiven? Would the face cry a carcass billionfold such litany over plain meadow, crane, feather, white, smoke reported for weeks and weeks and the water shimmers where it shouldn't? Smoke in a classroom, smoke in a classroom, smoke in a classroom, chalk, white, who almost obliterates you, thorn plucked from paradise, steel sprinkled with hazelnut bone, laid on bone, with the face indicate the vision you study all night. Again, what almost obliterates you? June is here, decadent, barren, so thin to want or not becomes another form, unearth light from a good, good box. Three photographs from a move gone. Remember, no apology is a tulip shape. Fear in a petticoat pressing the buttons until the doors open. Etiquette says, going up, what floor? Aunt Sophia's chemotherapy appointment. Afterward in a violet scarf. Tamagoyaki to gohango onegai shimas. Sweet enough for the news, graduation music, soft by piano, orchid arrangement, and moss. Teacher who makes beaded bracelets for every pupil. Teacher who plays tennis on Sunday, where the hometown with a bakery older than war almost obliterates you. Station code IN11, tactile, underfoot, plunge up to your neck. Ofurode. Unless the skin unbearably so dews. Baghdad calls, high of 42 degrees Celsius. Orchid calls, Sappho calls. Will the place reach you word for word? Milai calls. Darfur calls. Monterey Park calls with that one person waving roughly 600 kilometer toward the satellite image of a bad day call. Would the eyes be blotted or obscured but the, the marble mouth seeking? Would this almost obliterate you? Would the four palaces topple ending with the court of heaven? Breath of day almost obliterates you. Sarajevo calls. Nanjing calls, Sarajevo calls, Nanjing calls. 
1907 in Chile at the Domingo Santa Maria School calls. Gaza calls. Darling in cursive appears like a sonogram off center, though there's a face. Gaza calls. I wish I could keep saying this poem, but I feel like I'm going to die. I'm sorry. I will stop my poem here. Um, and I would like to call on you all to the earth is calling us. The earth is calling us. Here's my candle. I would love to see your candles if you have one. The earth is calling us. We only have a few minutes left together. My brothers are here. I don't know if you can see them, but they are here. I want to know who is here with you. Elliot says, my candle is the White House engulfed in flames. Thank you, Elliot. Chloe has a candle. Aria has a candle. We have so little time together. I know Ansem will kick us out when it's needed to, but please Ansem, don't kick us out just yet. We have six minutes together. We only have six minutes left. <laughs> no, we can go longer than that. Thank We'd like to know who else is here with us. <laughs> Neela is holding a candle, though not lit because she's two, says Elliot. On hell or angel, I see your candle. <laughs> Fatima, thank you. Eleanor, I see your candle.
Read the comment. Last week, I helped light candles at a vigil for Gaza. It's really beautiful to find that continuum here. Thank you for your comment. Leah says, how rare and wonderful to sit together in silence. I agree. Thank you. I still will be respectful of our time together. We will have two more minutes of this. We have so little time left. We have so little time left. What will you do? We have so little time left. What will you do? We have so little time left. <laughs> what will you do? Thank you. Hansel, please let us go. Well, what we do at the end of these readings is unmute everybody to say hello and goodbye and head off into the rest of the day home uh, changed. And But before we do that, I just want to say, Sophia, thank you so much for uh, agreeing to put the reading together. Uh, thank you for inviting these amazing people to read. Um, thank you to Aria and Fatima and Leah and Sylvia. And uh, uh, because their names came up, I want to give a distant thank you shout to uh, Farid and Susan, who are old compadres. And um, thanks, everyone, for being here. These uh, will continue. Next week, Philip Marinovich will be putting one together. Uh, Camelia Youssef in two weeks, Claire de Vogt in three weeks, and then maybe we take a little break. Um, should we throw the mics open? Oh, also, this is record being recorded, so it'll be up on the rail site and YouTube probably tonight or tomorrow. Uh, so it can be sent around, and maybe that silence can be stretched and stretched. So there's that too. Thank you, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Thank you, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, you so much, Thank Sophia. You, Sophia. Thank you. Thank you, Vatma. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you, Leah. Thank you. Thank Sophia. you, Leah. Thank you, Aria. Thank you. Thank you, Aria. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Leah, Sophia, Aria, Fatima. That was incredible. Thank you. Thank you, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. It was powerful. Thank you. Yes, it certainly was. Our hearts with you guys. Our spirit.